Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Q&A live stream. We have a full house of guests as you can see. We are packed to the brim of J-Mods and it is uh, fantastic. So, I don't think I've been on a stream that, with this many J-Mods before. Crazy. Um, I am your host Mod Sani, and I'm joined by none other than the wonderful Mod Arcane, Mod Husky, Mod Kirby, Mod Kieran and Mod Aiza. How is everyone doing? Fantastic. Doing fantastic. Well, yeah, you have a kitten. <laughs> of course you're doing fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's two very different... <laughs> There's two very different views with, like, um, Aiza's very, like, um, construction in progress background with Kieran's very cuddly and cosy gear and set um getting set in i like it i like the contrast 200 deferent set in my arms right there yeah, don't, don't mind the mess <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh 
Um, what has everyone been working on? Does anyone want to share what's what's been happening this week? Can we get some order so we avoid all this like awkward silence, please? <laughs> go on, Arcane. You can you can go. You can go. <laughs> okay. Um, See, so yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I've been uh, working on next. We're really really wrapping up now. We did a lot of play tests the past couple of weeks. Really fine tuning it and making the gameplay feel just right. I set, sent my last job to QA today, so assuming that doesn't come back, I'm done at least. And so I'm really excited for lunch. Otherwise, I've just been playing Grubana and complaining about the cold. Nice, nice. I think we all have. I'm now jumped up. It's hit that time now where the ha whole house is cold. I don't think there's one room I can like sneak into for a bit of warmth. Sucks. Hit that point where the um, British people stop complaining about how hot it is and start complaining about how cold it is. <laughs> I feel like there's definitely some of us that started early though. Like as soon as as soon as August hit, it's like it's too cold. It's too cold. I'm out of here. Uh, Kieran, how are you My doing? My heat went on three weeks ago. <laughs> Mine's been on every now and then. Um, yeah, I'm doing I'm doing great. I've been spending some time this week looking at our projects for 2022 and throughout all of next year. So putting some deep some more some more details on those and pushing those a little bit more forward. But but yeah, really exciting stuff. Awesome, and I imagine the chat is wondering how is the how is the kitten? The kitten is fine. She's purring quite loudly, but my, my mic doesn't pick it up. I think. Good to hear. Good to hear. Kirby, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Unfortunately, uh, Movember has reminded me that I'm physically incapable of growing facial hair. But <laughs> uh, in terms of work stuff, I'm finally getting around to starting on um. Loot keys for the wilderness. Currently, your items are teleported to Hammer Space, and I just need to get them back out again. <laughs> awesome, awesome stuff. Aiza, how uh, how's things been going for you? Oh, Aiza is gone. He's he's uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's frozen. So husk. Oh, no, he's back. He's back. Uh, have I have I frozen? It looks like I'm mind. All right, well, we'll go. We'll go to Husky first. Oh, so yeah, I'm against, right, it's because I moved my phone. I'm currently tied, tethered in on a mobile hotspot, so my internet is a little bit ropey. I apparently, yeah. <laughs> I think he's delayed. Yeah, he must be. He's he super delayed. Be. <laughs> Husky, how are uh, how are you doing in the meantime? Uh, I'm good. I'm just pondering how long it takes, like, Aiza's, like, eyebrows being raised to, to reach the and come back to us. Uh, but yeah, it's been good. Uh, worked a uh, group chat the last couple weeks and uh, decided to look into doing some of the chat mode stuff, which about half the game appears to hate me for right now. We'll, we'll touch on that a bit later. Uh, was moving on to looking at, like, uh, the players suggest a bunch of clan broadcasts. Uh, broadcast improvements uh, so I've been starting looking into how I might go through those you know more fine control over level ups you get collection log uniques receive PKs uh, when a hardcore loses a life thinking about adding all these sorts of options and filters to the broadcast system for clans and thinking about the best way to do that system so that's that's my next work some awesome good stuff Aiza do we do we have you back Hopefully, I'm on Wi-Fi now, but I only have two bars of signal, so I definitely was not prepared for this. It feels like there's less of a delay now because I'm actually getting conversation that's happening live <laughs> rather than about a minute ago. Uh, yeah, as you can probably see, I'm I'm current. I'm in a different room from where normally we've got a lot of work going on at the moment, so we're mid renovation, and um, this room now currently stinks like cement, and it is definitely impacting my uh, my ability to think and process things. But that's fine. Uh, this week I've been, honestly, a, lo a lot of the last few weeks has been kind of like um, getting up to speed with things since Mod Sween left, obviously being, you know, Sween the previous lead CM, there's a lot of things to take over temporarily in terms of responsibility. But I've been working through a, um, a blog actually that Elena um, put together in regards to Group Iron Man, like post-launch feedback. Uh, I'm sure we'll probably talk about it at some point, but that is due to be coming out tomorrow. Um, and outside of that, there's just been a lot of kind of like top level planning ready for next year and um, putting together some cool things like the Golden Gnomes and some more interesting pieces of information that hopefully we'll be able to, uh, to talk about in terms of what's coming out next year. Yeah, good 
stuff good stuff indeed all right before we get into our q a let's go through a couple of announcements not as many as there normally are but first off we have exclamation mark game update this week's update brings the awesome android beta successful applicants for our android beta are taking all of our new features out for a spin we're reviewing all of your feedback in discord so thank you very much to everyone who has participated so far uh, this week we also introduced some awesome quality of life improvements for group iron man as well introducing gold more bank space and of course the literal gold sink uh, go make it in your very own poh today if you can afford it uh, and send us your pictures we might just feature them on stream next week uh, and we have exclamation mark melvor idol what do you afk when you're playing old school the obvious answer is melvor idol a feature rich runescape inspired idol game that's now been supported and published by Jagex Partners. The game has now officially launched, so go and check it out right now uh, with exclamation mark Melville Idol. And I think we've got something to show you. What do you get if you take a game like RuneScape and strip it down to its absolute purest form? The answer? is Melvor Idol. A game where you can go on wild adventures, master over 20 unique skills, venture into perilous dungeons and face off against horrifying bosses, all while simply pressing a few buttons and watching your skill levels rocket. Your progress even continues when you're offline. Beneath Melvor's accessible modern sheen hides a fiendish complexity for those who really want to roll their sleeves up and get stuck in with a thriving community to help you every step of the way. Melvor Idol has the depth and breadth of a skills-based MMO, allowing you to choose your adventure. Download Melvor Idol now, available on Steam, mobile and browser. Awesome, awesome stuff. So yeah, if you haven't checked it out, make sure you exclamation mark Melvore Idol to do so. Uh, and just along with the Android beta launching yesterday, I'm going to quickly swing over to Aiza for some more information. Oh, the Android beta. Okay, yeah, good. Told you that cement was really hitting hard. Um, okay, so those, <laughs> those that have been involved in the Android beta, there is going to be an update releasing this evening uh, around about 6 p.m that should hopefully look to address some of the issues that players have experienced with crashing, especially when the app first starts to load. Um, we're going to be posting some information in the Discord, so if you do have access to the beta, make sure you head to the Old School Discord, check out the beta channels, there'll be info in there. But essentially, TLDR is that if you were, the, if you were one of the players who experienced the app crashing when it first loaded, not when it logged in, um, you'll essentially have to uninstall the app and then reinstall it. And as part of that, you will be um, you will have to also opt out of the beta and then re-opt in. You still have access. That's no problem. It just might take uh, a little bit of time for it to, to update for you to be able to get the the new um, the new version. Everyone else who has access to the beta that was working on it and it was fine, just update it as normal. And that's pretty much it. Awesome, awesome stuff. And as we said before, like your feedback is very, very crucial. And we've seen that. Uh, those people invited into the Discord channels have been leaving some great feedback, so please, please, please keep leaving uh, your comments there. Uh, right, I think, with that all out of the way, we should get into the questions. Today's just going to be a very general Q&A, lots of questions. Um, we were previously planning to give you a rundown for some of the Android beta features, but we're going to postpone that uh, until the rest of the team is available. Um, so... Without further ado, let's get into the questions. The first is from Doc Rock Mank, and they said, do you plan to address streamers attempting to circumvent the new dual staking limits? Short sure answer, yes. Long answer is the um, trying to circumvent the staking limits by the use of services such as middlemen or, you know, saying that you'll trade more gold after a stake has ended any kind of, um, basically any examples of where you are trading gold after the stake in regards or relation to that stake is against the rules. It falls under the player run games of chance, which means that it is a reportable and actionable offense. The best course of action is for players to report this kind of activity in game. I believe it's rule 13. 
and then that will get picked up by uh, player support and the anti team team. We'll also be taking uh, action specifically against certain um, streamers and, and prolific abusers that, that are out there currently doing it um, on a case-by-case -case basis as well. So essentially, to reiterate, trying to circumvent the, the dual stake limits that are currently in place is against the rules, and it can lead to your account having action taken against it. So don't do it if you don't want to risk your account being banned. Awesome, thank you, Aiza. Um, the next question we have is from Fit Met Hook. Uh, kind of sad that Irons can't use dupes slash deaths coffer GP to buy the bank slots. Would have been a good use for dupes rather than dropping them for bond money. Will this be reconsidered? I think this is just an open question to any of you. Right, well, everyone's uh, no, please silent, buy so I'll kick it off. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else will have to input after I surface this, but I, I remember when we were looking at feedback regarding it, there were some concerns over how Death's Coffer uh, interacts with the value of items and how that might be potentially abused if I men were able to to essentially use that as a way of um, of, of using it for, for funds more, more than just the, you know, the reclaim item cost so if anyone can help expand on that and our reasoning behind it it would be fantastic because i can't sorry i just got a parrot <laughs> <laughs> right i mean people can manipulate ge limits maybe we should have made a death coffer be like fey limit instead of 10 people can and theoretically sort of like push the limit and, and, and suddenly, you know, flood a bunch of items in that aren't really the value they're supposed to. Um, and we know that that's done to get, like, round coffer limits and stuff in the past. Um, so that was no. And as far as being reconsidered, uh, there are no plans to reconsider it. Uh, it's definitely a way more difficult stance to change it now, now that it's live, because it's suddenly, like, you, you can imagine where someone did decide to drop, say, 200 mil as an Iron Man. You know, that, that was money they could have spent on leveling up their skills uh they didn't uh and they just slot and then we say oh haha ha, actually now you can throw in uh, your spare twisted bow and that person's gonna feel really hard done by right so no we don't have any plans to reconsider it there's no point holding on just in case um like i say no plans to reconsider it so like as, as terms of like it's ne not it's never gonna happen but like don't get your like don't just think jagex are sitting on this or like we're sitting on this for like you know we're gonna change it in a week or two's time because at least the best of my knowledge, that is not on the cards. Awesome stuff. Um, right, we'll move on to the next question. There's a name redacted. Uh, sort of loads of naughty people we're, we're taking from the Reddit threads and Twitter and that. So, um, Why can't loot broadcast work to opt me out of notifications from my friends? Uh, yeah, I could take this one because I implemented it. Um, long and short of it was that there, there was to that. Uh, the job request to sort of implement the broadcast system for group iron players, but there wasn't really any time given to doing some sort of big settings menu. It's not just a case of copy-pasting what we have for clans. There's a there's a whole part of like interface design and doing this, and maybe be another two weeks or so to get something up and running and working. Um, so for that reason, it was just a case of I did the job the best I could, which is you decide what you send to the rest of your clan mates or your group mates, so to say. That means it's under personal settings. I don't see this as a long-term sustainable way to settings uh, for what it's worth. I would like a group setting in the future, and I hope that we can get round to it because I don't want that to be bogged down. Uh, and maybe there just should have been some more consideration over saying if a threshold is zero, just don't send it. You know, maybe let people set it to one if they want to spam their clan mates with bones and cow hides and whatever else is dropping from sand crabs. But the default should have been to just say the setting hasn't been set. So don't send it. And for that, I just apologize. But if it's still happening, uh, speak to your group mates, ask them to stop, you know, spamming you with notifications. Um, yeah. Uh, and there's no real way for us to fix that context wise. I know people said, like, oh, just stop me receiving them and stuff if I don't want to see them. Um, the whole point is that, like, all the context is on the player who sends the message. We know exactly what item they got. We can look up its price. We can create the message that is sent in the chat and go. The player on the receiving end, once that's been, uh, you know, 
done by the server and sent to their client is literally just a piece of text. So I could start breaking that down and trying to figure out, okay, if text is in this format, then it must be a notification and it must be part of a loot drop broadcasts and the value converting it to like number is this, so don't send it. And then I would have to go and do that for like potential like pets and stuff and say, okay, if the message is formatted, like this be a pet drop and it gets really messy really quickly for something that realistically I just see as a short term thing, right? We, we need to get a group settings menu. Let's do it properly and let's not spend, you know, multiple days doing string parsing trying to figure out all the possibilities it could be and make sure that it is only those messages that are being handled that way and stuff and not something that somebody typed in their chat you know and, and got caught by it and, and all this messy stuff right like i just didn't there was just no reason to commit time to doing something that was only supposed to be a temporary stop yeah. the real strategy personally i've, time I've really enjoyed it. Get a feather. <laughs> <laughs> I've really enjoyed it. Like me and my friends are doing like different Slayer tasks and you put your uh, loot threshold on like 100 GP and then it's just like, what am I killing? Try and guess. And you just see like thousands of drops over like the next half an hour. Uh, I think it's hilarious. <laughs> agreed, agreed. Awesome. Thank you guys. Um, right. The next question we have is from mine, Aldi, who says, question regarding the new chat modes. What was the feedback like on it? And is there anything you're looking at changing for next week? Have you considered a separate text box for similar to private chat, splitting them to allow a more visual separation of text channels with a growing number of them? Oh, ready for another Husky ramble? Let's go. Uh, yeah, because this was something that the chat modes, I think there seems to have been a lot of praise for them but its implementation, for want of a better word, has been pretty shit, right? And not through, oh, you know, bad dev, stupid dev, how could that get on? It, it, it hinges on, like, multiple things. First of all, RuneLight had the feature existing, and I didn't know that at the time of development, right? Which means people had got accustomed to one way it works, and I come up with another way, and suddenly they're, they're jarring with each other, and people go, oh, well, it worked this way, and now it doesn't, and all this sort of stuff. So that's one issue. The second issue is that there was a fundamental misunderstanding on my part with how, how friends chat worked. I thought that the prefix for sending to your friends chat was slash space, but it's not. It's just a slash, no space. And what that means is any messages caught but that start into your friends chat of wanting to send it with the word I, you know, don't work. It assumes your, it tries to, it sends it to your group channel if you're a group Iron Man, or it just sends it into public chat if you're not, because obviously it said you tried to send it to your group Iron Man channel and doesn't. So, and then the third one was uh, we originally had, so on the buttons, you can right click it to set your chat mode. And on release, the game update for about an hour, it, you could do that for public mode, but that broke auto chat. So when we did a cold fix to fix some other stuff, I took the opportunity to re allow people to do auto chat and just said, that's fine. People can still type the things and get their, um, their chat mode changed. Unfortunately, that you've now got one way to get into it. And that way to get out of it doesn't exist. So that's really confusing to players. Like not everyone reads the news post. It's not very intuitive. It's really just bad UX and stuff, right? Uh, which is user experience. All of that, huge problems with the system. But for next week's update, I've already got like fixes to basically all of this. So the first thing is you're not going to be able to right click the buttons to go to mode for individual ones. Click the all button and it'll just say select which chat mode you want. So that's one big improvement. It allows you to get to public chat and it saves them all being on the individual buttons. Second one is slash I is no longer going to be the prefix for group Iron Man. It's going to be slash G with slash GC being guest clan. Um, it's a shame that we have already existed, but it, it feels weird to say slash G is guest clan and slash GC is group. So we went with just changing those around. Uh, thirdly, there's going to be a message in your chat as soon as you change chat mode that goes, hey, you've entered um, the clan's chat mode. Type this to the trick. And the fourth or fifth change or whatever I'm on now is that you don't need to send a message to change your mode. So just typing slash at P will change your mode as opposed to typing to type slash at P and a message. <sighs> so yeah, lots of improvements there. Thanks for all the feedback from you guys. I'm sorry it's been super frustrating to some people to get stuck in a chat mode and not realize what they need to do to get out of it. But um, yeah, I, that's all I can say. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Husky. I'm sure people will appreciate the, uh, the explanation and, and the quick fixes that are coming with it. So thank you very much. Uh, the next question we have is from uh, Silric. Uh, will Zealot Robes being effective at the Ectofunctus get polled? 
It was discussed in a previous Q&A and the response was that everyone thought it should already have worked there, considering where the ties to Mauritania are, thematically it fits well. Yes, we just need to find space to actually get a pole in. <laughs> Oh, Arcane, you're, you're muted. What about Simon says? Dogs. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Simon says, add it to a poll. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not going to hear the end of that now, thanks. <laughs> this is going to be a fun game, actually. You know what? Thank you for that, Arcane. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make, uh, yeah, some great times with this. <laughs> Simon says, the new internal Dragex. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even laughing at that. Elena just sent me a screenshot from chat and says, somebody who said, step husky, I'm stuck in friends chat, send help. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not going to lie. I kind of, I'm kind of loving how much like scuffage there has been in this stream. It's just been like from one to the next. It's not just like one particular outlier. Chaos. Beautiful. <laughs> Um, cool. <laughs> Moving back on point. Uh, the next question we have is from Custard Shot. Um, clicking fairy rings, particularly on mobile, is incredibly annoying. Can we make the clip box for fairy rings the entirety of the fairy ring rather than just the center tile? I'm a fan of that personally. Yeah. Great. I assume it's possible, but I don't actually know. Yeah, I know fairy rings are implemented in an interesting way to support getting the last destination up there, but I'm sure it's still possible. Would be a very nice improvement. Yeah, I feel like chat agrees. I'm very, very, very in favour of this this change. Who knows? Yeah, potentially. Potentially. If only for mobile, right? It's a real pain to use them on mobile. Yeah, this was Simon said, put it on a poll. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if Simon says. <laughs> I said nothing of the sort yet. <laughs> um, awesome. Okay. The next question is from uh, Occupying. Uh, are we ever getting new skills or has the team completely given up hope? Uh, it would be nice to get actual new content for the main game for everyone else instead of all the attention being on other stuff. It's been a while since we talked warding, um, which is the last poll we did for a skill. Like it's a few. When was it? Twenty nineteen. Must have been. Yeah, it's pre COVID. Um, so, but, but, obviously, it's a massive, massive topic. We've we've tried multiple times. It's a, it's like Marmite. People either seem to love it or hate it. Generally, if you don't want a skill, you really don't want a skill. Um, it's. People, we've tried sailing, we've tried artisan, we've tried warding. There's a lot of there's a lot of questions to answer before we before we get to the point of saying we're releasing a new skill. And namely, if we're going to do it, we need to work with the community from the start. I think we learned a lot looking back at how we approached warding. It was very much behind the scenes. We developed a, a design for for a skill and then took it to players. Um, rather than kind of bringing the community in on that journey from the start. There's still obviously a big question. Can you get it through a poll? Are 75% of players going to vote yes to a specific skill? Well, I think my general feeling is there's probably are over 75% for a skill. Whether you can get 75% for a specific skill is kind of the, the, the question. Because a lot of people want a skill. A lot of people disagree on which skill. So there's a lot of work to even get to the point of saying, this is the skill we want to go with. But I do think it is something I would very much like to do with old school. You know, across the last year, there's been a lot of conversation around one, I mean, well, two things. Like old school, maybe, maybe some things are getting a bit stale. A lot of people are getting to the max game and don't have much to do. B, not really having much content released. But... A skill is a real opportunity to add some new depth to old school. You get this a chance to add new systems, major new mechanics that can be important to the game. They're also scary, right? A new mechanic or something with depth can impact a lot of things. And if you don't like that skill, 
it's it's quite off putting. So whatever we do, we've got to be very careful with how we do it and bring the community in from step one of that process. Whether that's public public blogs or it's a smaller cohort of players that we bring internal and almost have conversations with them back and forward. Either way, there's a solution we need to, to come up with. Uh, but I think myself, at least, that old school is ready for a new skill and it's a real chance to offer a big update. Um, you know, a lot of our other releases fall into the same handful of categories, right? It's a new boss, it's a new raid, it's a new quest, it's a new skilling feature, it's something for PvP, whatever. It's the same thing again and again. I want to do something cool and unique and the skills the right, the, the ideal thing for doing that. What, um, do you like to see a, a new skill completely, Kieran? Or would you want to see one of the old ones that we polled come back? Your person, personal opinion? Uh, my, my personal opinion is a lot of people shout about sailing. I think there's a lot you could do with sailing. The original pitch for sailing lacked detail. It, it didn't really go to the depth of describing what the skill would really fully be either. There's a lot you could do with it, but my personal preference is actually to go and create like a like a Sim City style game in old school um, and, and make that a skill. Like running a city, running a town in in the medieval like fantasy world where you know you're having to construct your the layout of your town properly. Um, manage the resources, etc., and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, that you can instantly imagine a whole swathe of things that could come with it. So, you know, it does sound like managing miscellaneous, but imagine managing miscellaneous, but on an actual new scale, right? Kingdom is so simple. Where do you want the people to be? This would be like managing a whole economy, managing a town, but in the medieval fantasy setting, rather than obviously what most of those games do and it's more of a modern city so i think there's a whole sorts of cool things you could do with that and it's a little bit more self-contained um so it doesn't necessarily badly impact a lot of the stuff around the game if you don't like it um but yeah that's my view sorry for anybody else who's also got opinions i've just kind of talked to talk to talk as long as they're not fallout 4 cent, uh, settlements i think we're, we're fine like, if we're going that way uh, anyone else? Has anyone else got like what they'd like to see as a skill? I think what Kieran sound, said sounds cool, um, but as a complete alternative and, and a really cheap answer, I'd really like to see a combination of sailing and engineering. I really like the aspect of sailing, giving you the option to have some more exploration throughout the world and the whole world building that it could bring in. And then if you could you know, travel to the islands and there were dungeons that you had to explore, uh, and you know challenges to complete and such. I think that would be a much better combination rather than bringing just Dungeoneering out because I think Dungeoneering, to me at least, felt more like a mini game and that was just given skill levels because it, well, it worked. But I don't think it really works for old school now. But combining the two, you know, it it makes it a little bit more thematic. So. Awesome. Awesome. Um, any other opinions before we move on? Or I just think, like, I kind of want to piggyback on something Kieran said there a little bit, which is just, like, the thing that New Skill comes up, and we see it more a bit the last few weeks, is is just, like, people want content, right? Like, they, they really just want content, right? Where there's a lot of talk about, like, oh, the, you know, news posts are getting memed recently. There's not, like, what are Jagex doing? We want content. We've had game modes and game modes. And while, you know, like, Extreme Hardcore Ultimate Group Iron Man mode uh, 2K22 sounds maybe really cool, you know, like, like let's let's give us stuff. And I think that that's something that the team definitely agrees sentiment-wise and want to do sort of moving forward. I think one of the exciting things uh, we've all been talking about internally is how we're, like, sort of looking at our team restructure for the next year. And mostly in terms of, as people pointed out, you've got all the amount of J mods you had. Why have we not had triple the amount of content? And some of those answers can be explained away by, oh, well, we've got developers working on the party client, and you know, we've got other developers that are potentially looking at like new player experience and stuff. So not everyone is on um, actual content. But the the real truth of the matter is, people need trained up. You can't just grab somebody in and tell them to go do a project by themselves. 
So a lot of these people get added on to existing teams. So while we had three teams, we now only had four, but we had a bunch more developers. But instead of teams of two or three, these are like now like four or five developer teams. And all that means is the content release that you get maybe just has more stuff on it because there were more people. But like, it's not more content releases. And I think that's something that we're definitely looking and, and trying to change for the next year is maybe breaking these down now that people have got, you know, training, having multiple two-man teams, three-man teams, which to me sounds really exciting. And I hope that does work out and gives people more uh, content to look forward to, right? I obviously can't say what these teams are, or what they're doing, but that, that, that should be hopefully a really positive change because you've got people who have been trained up and have the skills to just run a team together and see it through from start to completion without needing like a bunch of supervision and a bunch of training and a bunch of, hey, my code doesn't work. Uh, can you explain why, you know? So yeah, I, I think that's, that, that should be a really positive looks. step. <laughs> hey, fake it till you make it. <laughs> awesome. Uh. Awesome. All right, let's move on then. Um, unless Arcane or Kirby want to wanna share something else. No? no, I'm good. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Um, the next question we have is from Sad Gardener. Uh, any updates on Bounty Hunter? When will it be reintroduced? Will it ever be reintroduced? I have a feeling that we may have covered this last week. It's stuck in my brain, at least, in terms of the response that I would give. So it makes me think that I at least spoke to it to some degree. Um, in terms of updates on Bounty Hunter, the reality is that like in the immediate very near future we're talking like the next few months no there's there aren't any plans just yet to bring back bounty hunter because we need to figure out a way that we can bring it back where it can't be abused because ultimately you know if we bring it back in its previous format especially with bounty hunter v2 we're going to be faced with the same problems that we did before bounty hunter version one was abused on a much less severe scale and i personally feel like that would be a good middle ground as a temporary measure to bring back but i would much rather that we spent the time coming up with a new design for bounty hunter that ticks all the boxes for the type of players that actually want to engage in bounty hunter and those that maybe have never done before but would be up for it if it was you know built around their wants and needs as well so i guess what i'm saying is we need to work out a design once we've got a good design, we can bring that forward and, and then we can start looking at bringing back something like Bounty Hunter. But in terms of just straight up bringing back Bounty Hunter V2 or V1, it, it's not going to be anything that's going to be coming out anytime soon. But we do know how much players want Bounty Hunter and want PvP updates. Um, and yeah, I know that we've said it many times before and I know that the wilderness changes have unfortunately been delayed, but as Kirby mentioned a moment ago, you know, we are working through those. Loot keys are being worked on now. A lot of the changes have been going through. I've seen progress updates for things like the, the Revenant Cave uh, Superior Boss as well as the um, Wilderness Slayer Cave updates. They are all currently being in progress now and I think that they'll be relatively, you know, Ready, ready for release relatively soon. So we are definitely putting more resource towards PvP now. And I would like to say that next year, you're going to see a lot more of that compared to what we've had in previous years. But I also understand that, you know, you, you'd at the moment just got to take my word for it. And in the past, we've not really delivered on that. So hopefully 2022 will be different. Um, and that when we get a chance to surface the roadmap to you, uh, at the appropriate time, once it's all finalized and locked in and so on and so forth, you'll see that. Um, and that's something to, to, to be, uh, yeah, excited about. But in, until then, there's no more information that I can give, unfortunately. Awesome. Thank you, Faiza. Um, the next question is a chonka. So and hopefully I pronounced all these words right. So from <laughs> Dennis Bump, uh, Suka hides are an untradeable drop only used for crafting lunar equipment during lunar diplomacy. They have no use after the quest, but are still a guaranteed drop. After completing lunar diplomacy, could we retain the ability to tan them and craft more lunar robes? Currently, the only way to reobtain lunar equipment post quest is to buy it back from the one Iromancer or Purdue. Lunar equipment is always lost on death, has worse bonuses than Mystic and outs for under 100 GP, so making the robes craftable would not be overpowered. Alternatively, could the hides be removed from the Suqua drop table to reduce clutter during Slayer tasks? 
Oh. I do feel like this is probably an intentional thing to make it so you can't remake the equipment after the quest, or like more than once. But I can't really think of why. Otherwise, why would they? I mean, let's make it not always lost on death. That seems a fairly trivial change that shouldn't really need to be such a problem, I'd imagine. Um, it yeah, should appear in your face, though, like other items, right? Yeah. But I think there's, there's a few items, not just Lunas, like even the Chronicle and stuff like that, that when you die, it just doesn't appear in your gravestone. It's just, it seems needless. Um, so yeah. we can do that. <laughs> but you can buy back the Lunar robes, so nobody's going to make them. There's no reason to be able to make them from Super Hide if you can just buy them from the shop, that's quicker. So realistically, your solution is you need a new use for the Super Hides. Well, I think just so re-enabling the ability to make the armor for the sake of it, if a player wants to, probably okay. Like, Iron Man will probably bank a bunch of super hides just doing the tasks or something, and then maybe it's just a bit of crafting XP. I kind of get the logic and reasoning behind why it is this way as well, because you could talk... I mean, it is essentially a quest item, and usually we make it so quest items are only obtainable at that part in the quest, and after you don't need them, you don't get them anymore. That's pretty typical design choices that we make these days but in this case it's kind of like a hide from a creature that you kill after the quest and why does it suddenly not have hides and i guess the developer at the time just didn't see a need to make a use for it right and certainly not a meta use for it right because that's always a question with this stuff is sometimes you can make content but if it's dead content or has no use it's you know even making lunar robes i don't see it being incredibly useful Unless it is just for a bit of crafting XP, as you said, while you do the monk task. It's just not a pressing issue. That's, yeah. that's the, 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 the really. longer short of it. If we come up with a use for super hides in the future, it's a good resource that we can acknowledge that's there. But it's just super not Super hide sail for your boat. It's thicker and more durable than using cloth. There you go. And thus, the new skill works. <laughs> already got the basis it. for it try it out in the beta <laughs> awesome awesome thank you guys um the next question we have is from rufus swink uh currently the best method to runecraft is unlocked at level 23 is there any more information about the new runecrafting method that has been discussed in the past i was in a meeting today where we were discussing stuff that we could do for it or not do for it uh the, it's definitely something that, uh, at least from a design perspective, that we're looking into um, the Guardians of Gilador, uh idea that was pitched in one of the gazettes a while ago. Um, we're still super early on. It's the thing. We still need to get it pulled. We still need to have something to present to the players. But, but yeah, there is something in the works for that. Just I can't really go into details um, because, I mean, ultimately, this sort of thing could, could still pass up, could still, or... I mean, I, I'm kind of saying this before, like, you know, anything gets presented to you guys. But the, the truth is that sometimes projects just get cut as well. I don't think this will, but like, you know, it, it's one of those things. Players could turn around to me in six months and go, "Hey, Husky, where's this thing that you promised on a Q&A on the 25th of November?" And I'm like, "Oh, sorry, it got cut because we decided we didn't want to do it after all, right?" But the truth is that yes, we are still looking into that. You know, the reality is though, I don't know if this new method is going to surpass. Lava runes, and in terms of XP per hour directly. So, what I would imagine is the best XP per hour method is probably still going to remain lava runes. Um, because when we've got to make content, we've also got to think about how do we balance it? And that comes from three factors how AFK it is, how much money do you make from it, and how much XP do you get from it. That's the sort of the three broad areas that matter. Realistically, pretty much, I imagine not many activities would add to runecrafting end up being more less it, uh, more more intensive than lava runes. So we're probably not going to beat it there. Um, lava runes are really good XP per hour because of that. Well, I mean, to be honest, because of that, who knows? It was developed a long ass time ago, but that's the situation it is in now. And so, if we were to bring in something that was easier to do AFK and surpass lava runes, 
I don't think that's right, even if it had a high requirement. So it's it's difficult because you don't want to you don't want to undermine that sort of stuff too. Yeah. Difficult, yeah. and I think the vast majority of players aren't going to do lava room crafting anyway. It's it's I'd say it's a fairly niche proportion of players who would do lava room crafting <laughs> over over Zer or Zenami. Yeah, I think for sure, like th those are the two things that you would compare to as well, right? If it's if it's less XP than super AFK Zaya, that's probably really bad. But it could probably be more XP than ZMI because ZMI is just follow someone to an altar, click, click your pouches, do a few teleports, and then follow someone for a good chunk of it. So there's probably a middle ground. But the problem we sometimes run into with balancing stuff as well is what if there isn't a middle ground between like ZMI and Lavas, right? You know, where it's like they're too close. But we want it to be better than one, but worse than the other. That's sometimes where, like you say, you can start looking at other factors, like, oh, maybe this just gives a lot more money, right? You know, it, there's, there's other vectors we can go for instead of XP. Uh, maybe it's equivalent XP rates than ZMI, but you make a lot more money doing it and stuff. There's also just like the fun of the content as well, just generally, like the meta systems around it. Like, I, I would do Sepulchre if it was like half as good XP as it was. Like, just because of how fun that content is. It makes agility just a breeze. Like, you don't even think about it. You just do Sepulchre, and all of a sudden you're 99 agility just because you're just getting the zone and you're just clicking like a madman. Like, if you make a mini game good enough, it doesn't really matter about the XP and the GP, I don't think. Obviously, it just it gives you an incentive to go there in the first place, but if it's fun enough, that carries itself. Yeah. At the basic level, we should be able for pretty much every scaling method we had to be fun to some degree, right? That's kind of a basic a part of it. But I wouldn't change the XP rate based on how fun something is, so to speak. And I would still kind of come back down to those three criteria of how much effort does it take from the player. Um, but yeah, runecrafting as a whole doesn't feel like it's rewarding enough for the effort. And hence why I think it always falls down to the bot, the, you know, top of the list for most hated skill because you get barely any XP an hour. Yet it's very intensive, and even the profit isn't really there anymore. It's certainly not for most methods. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, everyone. Right, I've got a nice easy one for the next question. So from one pro goober, uh, what is the confirmed release date for next? I feel like I saw January fifth somewhere. I want to be sure I'm taking that Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday off from work for a five-day binge. January fifth is the correct is the correct date. So straight after straight after New Year's and Christmas, uh, fresh out. You know, you'll be maybe stuffed full of Christmas dinner and probably had too much to drink for a couple of weeks. Time to settle down straight into some next in, in the New Year. I feel like if you've still got Christmas dinner by January 5th, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> oh, I don't know about All that right, song. Fair I'm remembering Christmas you... leftovers. Have you still got uh, any If you're going to bring up the cookies, yeah. I know Have you still gonna... got them? You best say no. No, no they're, they're gone. They're gone. All right. <laughs> I, think, I think you had them for like nearly nearly over a month, right? If not two. That's they just were fine. There was, there was no date on them. And they just have a three-day use-by date. Gooey. I didn't see that on the box, so it didn't exist. It was on eyes. every single individually wrapped cookie with the yeah, big label on that. the front of it. I don't need to look at that. They just need to go in my mouth. You know? <laughs> um, right. right. The next question is from uh, Odd Lloyd. Uh, can you discuss what the thought process was like regarding keeping Nex in her old design? Did you consider changing her into something different? most of the things are with the old design because it's an old update so we kind of want to preserve that nostalgia aspect of it i do kind of i understand the complaint of like it's not up to the same kind of standard that what we usually do like nightmare right like that, that's got so much like of its own like concept arting and design and modeling and stuff well for this year we backported it touched it up a bit um and we're good to go i do think it looks good and it feels really good but it parts all subjective at the end of the day. Yeah, I wonder what the conversation and feedback would be getting would be like if we had updated next to be, you know, with fancier, more updated graphics. Would it just be a complete 180 of 
this doesn't look like Nex. This doesn't feel like how Nex should feel. Uh, it doesn't look old school because we've seen quite a lot of that recently with with a fair few designs where we have pushed the standard up considerably. And um, yeah, this really is just like a true testament to, to how Nex was and how Nex fits into the game. Um, and I've personally found it really interesting just kind of like keeping on top of the feedback coming in regarding that because typically it's the opposite. You know, people will will mostly say it doesn't feel old school and this is about as old school as you can get in terms of design i find and now it's not good enough <laughs> so i'm sure there are people out there that really love the the look of old necks that you know it's it's very often that those that are unhappy are more vocal than those that are happy and maybe that's just you know all that we're seeing right now and if it was the other way around then we'll see the opposite feedback but yeah definitely found it interesting yeah i, I think i think next looks fine i love the look of next um, you know, but we've seen the feedback with Torva, right? Like Torva and how it looks. It oh, it doesn't look exactly how it used to. Now, there's a multiple factors in there, right? It's a different human model and all sorts of things we've had to deal with there. But when I think about Next, and it's not just art, it's not just graphics. I mean, I don't think any of us here are artists, so it's harder to even comment on that. But even from a design perspective, does Next's design and balance from the original work in old school? Well, no, <laughs> to, to a large degree, right? Like what players had in 2011 was very different to what they have in old school. So you do have to make changes, subtle changes to mechanics. We have the benefit of hindsight for mechanics that didn't necessarily work as they wanted them to and things like that. But you do have to keep in mind that we're not promising, we're not, we're not coming here to promise you next to give you something else. It would be misleading to say we're bringing back next and then give her a boss with completely different phases and mechanics. That doesn't make sense either. So it's got to be recognizable and familiar to the people who have played it in the past, while still being something that we can confidently say, this is right for old school in 2022 when it comes out. And that's where we go and try and balance both of these aspects and get it right. And from the play test we've been doing, I think Nex is feeling pretty darn good. And it's a familiar boss fight. It's the same broad mechanics that she had in 2011 with a few tweaks here and there particularly on balancing to make it right for, for old school and touching on the whole like as i see people in chat spamming about torva right you know they're all like torva redesign torva the truth of the matter for paul the look of something Thing, look of something will almost never pass a poll it's so subjective because you've got people who think it looks great and you have people who think it who think it looks not so great and it's always just to like subjectively viewing that feedback and trying to figure out like is it just like 10 percent vocal minority who like hate it and then we pitch something else and a bunch of people come out and go oh my god we it was the torva from the past and we love torva from the past and that's what we want and you know sometimes in terms of like designs and stuff i think what kieran said is right like it is all about just hitting what people identify as Torva. If we say here's Torva armor, but it doesn't look like what Torva armor looked in the day, then it's armor, right? The, like we've watched its mechanics and stuff to fit our game better, right? We don't have the extended HP. It's essentially just a better bandos and, and all this. But like, there is that aspect of this content had a precedent for like mechanics, uh, looks, you know, we have to stick to it somewhat um without like just making it not the content that we said we were going to deliver to players yeah and i think in we've spoken about this in some previous um streams but the design slash art of old school is such an interesting topic because there's so many different <laughs> different elements you can take from like from the classic crocodiles all the way to like the elves and then the parts of Karen and Kebosh, you know, there's, there's even just those three specifics, there's so many different elements to it and they're all unique in their own way. So like to pinpoint the style of old school is, is also quite difficult. Um, yeah. I mean, just, just literally bring up a Google images, the ogre from old school and then bring up like general Grado. <laughs> it's like <laughs> both things that were relatively old school, but like the ogre, is just horrifying. But we're all familiar with it. We love the ogre, but it does look rubbish compared to a lot of the other stuff we've got in the more recent history. 
yeah yeah i think it's worth anyone like, going back and looking at like the different uh models for different years of different pieces of content just to see the difference because it is quite it's quite interesting um cool the we've only got uh we haven't got that long left so i'll try and whisper a couple more questions um stonewigs has asked a uh, harmonized orb was going to be updated after you guys introduced raids free rewards but it's been left untouched could you guys please address it uh, we never said we were going to update it. We said we'd look into it and think about it because we acknowledge it as being somewhat of a problem. We have thought about it. We haven't really come to a consensus on this needs to be changed. We're still going to just kind of keep an eye on it. Um, it is possible that it just loses relevancy for a period of time when the, these new mage items comes out and then maybe later in the future, then it'll end up gaining relevancy again. I think it's fine if weapons lose and gain relevancy over time. Um, I think the cleanest solution would be introducing new standard spells or reworking the standard spell, but to some degrees, so then it naturally becomes stronger instead of just sitting there and outright buffing the item. I don't think that's a healthy way for us to go forward, where whenever we introduce new items, we need to evaluate all our past items and then just change them to make keep them relevant. Um, I don't think that's good. I think there's better ways we can do it. I think that kind of comes into the sort of harm or um, design way, right? right. Being you know, on the team that worked on it, I remember looking at the harm or it was going to be more DPS than setting and a four tick mage that fixes standard spell, but it's fantastic. I can't remember all the design discussions that happened back then if we went in depth with DPS calculators like we do now. But I mean, ultimately, I think it'd have enough long term sort of like look into it, right? You know, the fact that. Oh, as soon as you add an offhand, and it's it's kind of, you know, gonna fall anything else because it's so that's a big problem, right? Is it that Tome of Fire so ahead in terms of um, having the stuff to use it, you know? Yeah, just having a weapon that's so dependent on this like offhand from a fire making boss is kind of bizarre when you think about it. Like the the, the weapon harmonizes basically useless without that and. Introducing more uses that aren't dependent on that would be great. And again, like that's a much healthier way to make the harmonize use gain relevancy. Like the harmonize does what it says, right? It makes things attack one tick faster and removes the auto cast delay. Like it, you don't just throw stats on it to make it better. Like you change, you can change the offhand, you can change the spells. And um, that's just a bigger change. And we need a reason to do it. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I've, I feel like Husky's seen everyone's comments about uh, the lag, so I'm sure he's working on fixing it. I don't know if it's his end or I, our end or what. But... I, I've, li I've literally closed everything except Chrome and uh, Slack and a pop up of the old school Runescape chat. I have 26 up, 110 down. How can I have upload problems with my mic and stuff? Like, like the people don't stutter, uh, like unless like. <sighs> I don't know. Have they heard of all the same internet? Mm. Wi -Fi. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Cool. Well, hopefully by the end, uh, Hus I mean, you sounded fine then. Ironically, <laughs> you sounded okay then. Put <laughs> the internet until it becomes better. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like trying to get a drop right. You just complain on Reddit, and then the next kill you get it. You've got to just keep moaning about your internet, and it'll fix itself. Easy. Easy win. Um, right, I think we'll do uh, one more um, and then we'll share some play creator content and wrap up. Um, what is the team's take on Onyx Bolts slash tips? Are they in a good place? Uh, currently, they're not used due to their price slash effect. Uh, everyone outs them instead of using them, which just feels wrong, which is from uh, Wizzy Rolf. I'd say they're in an okay place. I do think they have relevancy. I do think they have a use case. It's just niche. And I think even if, like it would basically be, have to be better than rubies. It'd have to be, it'd have to be better than rubies to people compete with it. And I don't think we really want to introduce something that's just like straight up better than rubies DPS wise. So I think it's, it's okay as just being effectively an ALK as well as a nice option to heal with a Bolts. And who knows, maybe healing will be relevant at next. I, 
think it actually it's it's problem is the alk price just doesn't sense right i mean you've literally set like a floor for how how this this item is going to be priced at but then asking people to pay 10k for that effect is just never going to happen right and i get the logic of like oh well you're cutting down an onyx into 12 bolt tips which is like three mil value at the time you know like let's make I don't know, the bolts add up to 120k. Like, it could have been 60k, it could have been 10k, and I think it would have been fine as well, right? Like, people are just never going to use a bolt that expensive for an effect that weak. And I actually wonder where that bolt would sit at if it didn't have that ALK value, right? Because then it would sit at a value where people would use it, right? Um, yeah. I would, uh, yeah, I think it's right. If you fix the ALK value, that's a whole, ke that's a whole you know... Kettle of fish. Kettle of fish, is that a term? I don't know. Maybe it is. That's Maybe a barrel of fish. Good. Barrel of fish. Maybe. Kettle of fish makes no, no sense to me. You don't boil them in a kettle. But either way, yeah. Brutal. Changing the arc value is a problem. A can of worms. That's also a good one. A can of worms would be open if we change the arc value, right? There's lots of drop tables that they're on and they bring up the value. But maybe we can address it by maybe reducing how many you lose when you're using them. Something like that, where you know you have a much reduced odds of actually using a bolt up when you're firing them, and maybe try and come up with a, a ratio that feels right to make them more usable in combat. But at the same time, you know, people don't use them if if they are used much more widely. Is that actually a problem balancing wise? Are they quite overpowered if you're healing for a cheap rate? There's there's some things to consider, but I think there's probably solutions in there along those kind of lines. To get them in a place where they're not un absolutely unreasonable to use. Clear. I, I, did, I definitely didn't want to open that container of animals with regards to like reducing the out price all of a sudden. It's purpose in the game right now. It's just really hard to fix it, you know. Awesome. awesome. You had to do it. Thank you, Ron. Yeah, I, I think we could, we could introduce Kettle of Fish, considering we've got the Golden Sink now. I think you know, make it a Golden Sink exclusive item that takes damage he gets damage when you drink it easy um awesome right we're gonna go through some player created content before we wrap up stream uh, so this first one is from ostentatio uh, which is the demon wedding at the chaos altar oh cute that's some nice fashion scape anything possible in nice. old school yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, the next one we have is from uh, Viper Ride Graphics, which is a uh, Kirill armor and bat. Nice. That's cool. Very cool. It's, it's very, very cool. Why is, what's the bat for? Like, is she killing the bat? On GHCB? I feel like it looks like a, she's, she's like... Not, Commanding the bat, I think it looks like. Yeah, should I like throw in the bat out? Is this a new spell? I guess the sand is, <laughs> is it supposed bat. to be words sand? Maybe she just defeated Versic. Yeah, is, is, is this summoning? Away. Is this the new skill? <laughs> hint, hint. I do have to say, I new love how that the, um... GHCB looks. Yeah, it looks cool. New update to the um, Jad pet. You can unlock her transmog into the fire bat and. The other monsters. I like it. I like it. Hey, um, maybe we could release a, a hard mode version of the fight caves. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> oh, crazy. Who would do such a thing? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Get out of here. Um, the next one we have is from uh, Witchcrafty, uh, which is the herbivore flashy. No, no apparently it's not. It's not. Apparently like we got the wrong one. You wish. <laughs> we had to have one last scuff, of course. Of course. Hey, if that was a plushie, um, I'd, I'd definitely pick that up. You set us up for so much. Oh, cute plushie. What? Whoa. <laughs> it's oh my like, god. It's a complete opposite. He's got, cute. It's just has got blood pouring off his palm. <laughs> Which cra with crafty's plushies have definitely taken a turn. Like, I don't know what's happened, but. Um, so this one's actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually from a uh, Timothy Stinkbub called Old Tank. Um, 
And yeah, do we and have I, the... I, I love just... this. It's actually an awesome image. I love the style of it, the simplicity, but also the, just, the, just the, the attention to detail as well, even though it is so simple. <laughs> Cry, that was well, a story. I guess it's a... Are they crying? Face palming? I don't really know. I think they're face palming. I think that's like, yeah. Um, <laughs> awesome. Hopefully, we have the herbivore flushy now. I'm ho there we go. Oh, there hey. it is. <laughs> awesome. Very, very cool. Oh. Very, very cool. Um, In the last right. picture, was he face palming at the nest up transition or face palming at his friend who died? Just the whole stream, I think. Whole stream. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, I think we'll wrap up um, here because it's five past six, and I don't want, um, yeah, I don't want uh, production mod spear to stick around too long, and get booted by security. So, There's um, only gonna be so many cement fumes that I can uh, inhale. I need to get out of here. <laughs> so I used to just slowly coming down in this chair from the fumes. Um, right, we have two announcements to go through, and then we will wrap up. So. Exclamation mark game update. This week's update brings the awesome Android beta. Successful applicants for our Android beta are taking all of our new features out for a spin. We're reviewing all of your feedback in Discord, so thank you so much to everyone who has participated so far. Uh, this week, we also introduced some awesome quality of life improvements from Group Iron Man, as well as introducing some gold sinks, including more bank space and a literal gold sink. Uh, go and make it your very own. Go and make it in your very own POH today. Uh, send us your pictures, and we might just feature them on stream next week. And we also have exclamation mark Melvor Idol. What do you AFK when you're playing old school? The obvious answer is Melvor Idol, a feature-rich RuneScape-inspired idol game that's now been supported and published by Jagex Partners. The game has now officially launched. So go and check it out right now by typing in exclamation mark Melvor Idol for more info. Uh, and as Aiza touched on, um, should be now or around about after this stream, uh, the Android beta will be having an update to fix some issues. Um, so we will update the uh, Discord channels accordingly. And also tomorrow we will have a blog um, focusing around some changes for Group Iron Man. So stay tuned for that. Um, that is it. That is it. I just got 99 Astrology in Melville Idol. Just popped up now. Congrats me. Oh. GZ, GZ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There we go. What a way to round cake. off. I know. <laughs> what a way to round oh. off. Um, awesome. Man. Thank you all okay. so, so much for joining me. Um, this has been a pack stream, but quite quite a fun one, I'd say, considering the amount of scuffs and stuff. Um, yeah. Any any um, any closing words from any of you? Or, Thanks for tuning in. And tell us what skill you want, if you want us to do a skill. Yeah, let us know. I'd I'm have sure. words. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Don't bother oh, saying yeah, them, we won't even be able to know them, yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, without further ado, um, this has been the Old School RuneScape weekly live stream. Thank you to mods Kieran, Arcane, Kirby, Aiza, Husky, and behind the scenes, we have mods Spear. Uh, I've been your host, Monsani, and we will see you next week. Goodbye. See ya. What do you get if you take a game like RuneScape and strip it down to its absolute purest form? The answer is Melvor Idol. A game where you can go on wild adventures, master over 20 unique skills, venture into perilous dungeons, and face off against horrifying bosses all while simply pressing a few buttons and watching your skill levels rocket. Your progress even continues when you're offline. Beneath Melvor's accessible modern sheen hides a fiendish complexity for those who really want to roll their sleeves up and get stuck in with a thriving community to help you every step of the way. Melvor Idol has the depth and breadth of a skills-based MMO, allowing you to choose your adventure. Download Melvor Idol now. Available on Steam, mobile, and browser.